A fun way to bring student writing to life is to have them create a book cover using Canva. Let's dive in to see how we can create one in just a few minutes. Once we are inside Canva, I'm just going to choose to create a new design. And you could probably do a flyer or a poster. I think I'm going to do a custom size. We'll do a six by nine inch custom new design. And then I'm going to go over to the left right away and I'm going to click on apps. From here, I want to type in magic media. Magic morph will come up, but it is magic media and we wanna select return. And then we're going to click on this first option here. Once this is up, we want the students to describe the main character in their book that they have written. Uh, we're also wanting them to describe a scene that the character is in, in a lot of the different parts of the book, um, or just that main location. So if we do something really simple, like a young girl with her dog by a lake, I'm just going to say generate image. Now, what we want from our students is we want to pull out more descriptor words than just that. So this will be a challenge for some students to do that. Um, but what you can see is we get a pretty good image right away. So let's say I like this one here. What I can do with it, and we'll go back and we'll look at how you can really define these and I should say refine these. Um, but let's just look how if we were going to use this image right off the bat, make it really fast, how we could do that. I'm going to stretch using the corners and so that will not distort my image. But now what you'll notice is I have some white on top and white on the bottom and I would love for this picture to be stretched all the way up and all the way down without distorting it. With AI we can do that inside a Canva. So we're going to click on the image. We're going to click edit. From here we're going to go over to our Magic Studio tools and the one that I want to use is called Magic Expand. And I'm going to click on Whole Page, so it's going to expand to this whole area. Sometimes it will expand the whole entire picture where we'll see a tree come up here. Sometimes it'll just do the colors, so it at least will fill that whole space without distorting this image. So we're going to see what it comes up with. And that's really cool. It actually expanded the whole entire scene here. So now we have more ground that we didn't have before and we have a bigger sky. So if I really like this image and I could pick any of these, but this first one looks great, I'm going to say done. And then if we're making this really, really fast, I'm gonna go over to text. I can add custom text here if I want to. I can change the font, the size. The color, if I want to make it bold, underline, all the different effects. But the fastest way to do this is by looking at one of these that has already been created. So different font combinations you'll see here. So I'm going to look through one and see if there is a font that I like already. And let's just say... Let's just do this one. We're going to put it up here. We can make it a little bit bigger. And then this would be the name of the book. So it could be, um, let's call it a day at the pond. Pretty boring. Kids will come up with way better titles than that. But that's what we're going to call it. Uh, let's say I want to change that to a different color to make that stand out a little bit more. And let's make this a little bit more friendly in the color of, oh, let's see, maybe yellow? A day at the pond. Now, since these came together, I could ungroup and then I could move these independently if I wanted to, if I didn't want them on top like that. Okay, I'm not really digging this title, but <laughs> what would be a better title here? Uh, anyway, we'll move on. Uh, and then we want to have, we're just going to copy one of these 
We, of course, want to put by, and this can be by Susie Smith or whatever the student's name is. We're going to change that to a little bit smaller. And then we have this at the bottom. So we created a book cover very quickly, right? Using our prompt from our book. And we added text. We made it expand so it actually filled the whole area. And now we have a custom book cover that our students could use with their writing. So that is really cool. What I'd like to do, though, is take us back and we can look at the refining of this. So I'm going to say add page. I'm going to go back to my magic media. If it didn't pin here, um, then you'd go back through apps. But it looks like mine pinned here. And I can see my last generation here. So what we'd encourage students to do, because a lot of times they'll put in very little like we did there, and then they'll go, well, that's not what I was thinking. And we want it to come from them. We want it to be special to them. So uh, a young girl with red hair um, with her dog by a lake with a tent in the background. Maybe they're going camping or something like that. The other thing that we can do is these were more realistic pictures. So I can click on styles and I can make it a specific style, uh, maybe a soft focus for this one. I'm going to generate and we're just going to see what we get. And then I'm going to show you one really cool thing. If you're looking for more of like the Disney Pixar look, it's called a chibi, chibi character. Uh, if you're looking for more of that type of look, uh, we'll, we'll show you how to add that here. So maybe this is what they were thinking. Maybe not. If they don't like that style, they can just come right back here, get rid of that style, and try a different one. Maybe dreamy is what they were looking for. So again, if I liked this one, I could go and edit this and um, expand that picture. I'm going to see what else it comes up here with that dreamy style. Here's a completely different look, a different feel even, and we can put that in our prompt, kind of the feel that we want it to be. Um, but this one is kind of cool. And maybe that's more of the feeling that they were looking for. Uh, it's kind of, it kind of looks like they've got a tent on the water. So that might be kind of cool. But what we really wanted to do is match what our student wrote about and what it, what it actually looked like in their mind. And that's where we really get those descriptive words in the prompt. So that's where you're really going to encourage them to be very descriptive with this prompt to get them exactly what they want. Now, if we want it to be more of that Pixar Disney look, then we can't say Disney, we can't say Pixar. Those are copyrighted. So the key word that you're going to want to use is chibi. Let's say chibi character of a young girl with red hair. Okay, and then I'm going to take that style off because we're telling it a specific style right here. I'm going to say generate again. Okay, there we go. So now what we're seeing, that specific style is really big eyes. You see the sparkle in the eyes. You see it more of a playful, comic-like uh, character. So maybe that's what they're thinking, and maybe that's the style that they're looking for for the cover of their book. It just depends on what they're looking for. But if we're looking for that playful, cartoon-like style then the keyword you're going to want to use here is chibi. And you can put chibi character, uh, colon, that's fine. Something with chibi. And then, of course, we can go up to edit. We're going to magic expand to the whole page and let it do its thing, bringing it all the way from top to bottom, really making it side to side, full picture, just so awesome. And you saw that at how it stretched it, then it brought it back and it filled in this bottom. That's so cool. There's a couple different variations. You can see like this one has rocks added in there. This one, it just went with straight grass, would be up to the student what they would like to do with that. Uh, and then what I really like with this six by nine design is it leaves obvious space for a title and then the author's name. So again, we can go into our text, we can throw in our name and we are going to call this one Camping Ed Venture with Hoda. 
We're going to name the dog Coda. Now I didn't end up using that. I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to then highlight all this and I want to make it more of that purple color that I see inside here. I can see that I'm going to need to go to my effects on this one and I need to change this color here. You can see that outline and maybe it's that white that really brightens it up. It matches with the theme of kind of that bright style. Um, so if I liked that one, I might make it a little bit bigger, you know, and then maybe if I was really getting fancy, I could add in another piece of text that's like a cursive piece of text. And maybe I want that to be a little bit bigger. I'm going to take out with this. Make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to return here. We're going to do Camping Adventure. We're going to change that to with Coda. Maybe I do with Coda. Still kind of hard to read. I'm going to do the whole thing. Camping Adventure with Coda. I think I would have to change this to something a little bit better that we can read a little bit easier. With Coda. There we go. That one's okay. Okay. And then I probably would make this guy bigger. Camping Adventure with Coda. So it's not perfect, but you get the gist. Maybe that even needs to be white. So it's on the clouds there. Yeah, we could do the same effects even here uh, where we do this effect was outline. So we'll try an outline effect there. That helps. And if we did the opposite by putting that purple with that, Maybe we like that. Maybe we don't. Um, but then what I would say is we come down here and we say by uh, Susie Smith. You'll notice that this writing is really smashed together. That would be changed in this spacing. You can see our letter spacing was a negative number. So we can help that out by doing that. We maybe even want to do that here just a little bit, get that a little bit easier to read. There we go. So there's another option. You can see how if we would have finished this, this is a completely different mood. You know, this one, this one, this one, very, very similar prompts though. Uh, we just did a young girl with her dog at a lake, right? And that came out and maybe that works. This one, we added in a specific style. And I think this one was a dreamy style. And now this one, we added in the word chibi character. So there are so many different ways. The cool thing is though, that you are encouraging your students to get really descriptive on who they wrote about and where they wrote about. Tell more about the lake. What's in the background? What do they see? Uh, it can even be something like, we could change this to a chibi character, let's say a young adventurous boy running out of a cave from his last adventure, something like that. Um, we can switch our prompt completely. So they can either build on it or switch it completely. Now, obviously, that would be from a different story. But you can see using these chibi characters, it's kind of fun. This one looks like uh, he's having fun. This one, he's maybe scared. This one, he's determined. This one looks like a lot of fun. And it would just depend on the feel that the student is going for. So you can see how we can get a variety of these uh, different AI images just depending upon this prompt.
once you're all done and they have the image that they like, so if they like this very first one and you could have them create a few images, that would be fine too. It's kind of fun to create these. We're going to go up to share and you're going to say download. From here, depending upon what you're going to use it for, I would suggest either a JPEG or a PNG. So then they can uh, pop it into a Word document with their book. That would be great. If you do a PDF, it's probably going to print that whole page Whereas a JPEG and a PNG, you can do that size. So whatever one you want there, and then you're just going to tell it which page to do. So we just want that first current page, uh, or you can go and select, maybe you want one and two or just one, say done and download. And now this will download to my computer and I can use that image however I would like. Okay, so you can see how much fun students would have creating a book cover for their very own book. And big shout out to Miss Grubb. Uh, fifth grade teacher. She gave me the inspiration to create this video. She was doing book covers in Canva with her class one day when I was in there. So great job there. Uh, thank you for the inspiration and the awesome idea. This is such a fun project and just excited to share it with other teachers. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. I am all about free educational technology. Uh, so let me know what you're searching for in the comments below and let me know what you are doing uh, for reading month. The reading month is in March, so this video is coming out in March. Let me know other ideas that you are doing for reading month to spark reading in the classroom.